So this presentation will be about bridge design with Kadim and Grasshopper. Uh, I will try to focus uh, on the broad aspects of things, but my main point is to show that you can do stuff really easily with Sophistic. It's not only for complex structures, and you can use it efficiently in all stages of the design. Uh, my name is Aydin Öfstebe. Uh, I work uh, out of Christian Sun. I'm a bridge engineer at Kovi. Uh, this presentation will take you through a little bit about Kovi. Can skip that. Uh, some cutting basics. Uh, I sometimes have the tendency to s skip the basics and go straight for the fun stuff, so we need some of that. Uh, and then I'll take you through two of the projects that I've been working on recently the independent check of Hummelvik Brua, uh, a bridge, uh, a composite bridge that was launched, and a, uh, a parametric modeling of Mjös Brua, uh, one of the uh, options uh, for the Mjös bridge. Uh, and just a disclaimer, uh, or uh, be, if you're not aware, Kadim and Teddy is the same thing. I'll be using the terms a little bit uh, mixed. Uh, first, Kovi is spread out uh, across a bunch of countries, but we're mainly in Scandinavia, India, UK, and North America. Uh, within Norway, uh, most of our employees are stationed in Oslo, but we also have significant amount of people in Trondheim and uh, Bergen and other big cities where approximately 1300 people across Norway. Uh, this is probably like the most commercialized slide ever but I actually chose to place it into my PowerPoint because it's a really important reason for why I work at Kovi. They are really committed to following up on their core values for instance, uh, we care. Uh, when the war broke out in Ukraine, they said that they would match any contribution to the Red Cross given by the employees. That way, we managed to give two million kroners uh, to to the Red Cross. Uh, there's a lot of way for digital development. We are curious. I get to collaborate with people from from all over, uh, yeah, the world, uh, and. I think there are a lot of great dedicated employees, but still, uh, yeah, you're able to get a good work-life balance and make sure that it fits your needs. Just a few projects that Kovi have been involved in. Uh, Halugalan Brua, the second largest suspension bridge in Norway, uh, a collaboration between the bridge offices in Norway and in Denmark. Uh, then uh, we have Storsaisen Brua, where we're here, you can see there an, an inspection for the municipality. This is a part of the Atlanta Ravsvein, where James Bond was recently <laughs> filmed. Uh, Beistasen Brua, along Composite Bridge, a little bit north of uh, Trondheim. And then a lot of the more typical projects, like this one between Oslo and Kristiansand, uh, uh, a new uh, highway. This was my first project to be involved in, actually. And then we have some of these international projects. This was one that I was working on three to two years back. Uh, it's the Houston Ship Channel Bridge uh, crossing the shipping channel uh, in Houston, Texas. And of course, uh, the Norwegian offices aren't allowed to do the design in North America, but we did the QA of the Sophistic model. We also did a BIM model of the entire bridge with all of the million rebars and thousands of post tensioning cables that included. Uh, and despite not showing any images of it here, we actually used the CD base interface to get the data directly from the uh, database into Grasshopper. Uh, because in Grasshopper we also had all the geometry and that way we could do a QA of the cross sections that was used in uh, the FVM model and we could also do a Q QA of the weights uh, that was applied for the different parts of of the model. Okay, and uh, there's one more project. Yeah, this is actually a really interesting one. Kovi sponsored a, a bridge across a really flood prone valley in Rwanda and then they sent uh, 10 bridge engineers from across Scandinavia and North America down to help supervise the local construction team so we were there building for 10 days and then I had 10 day vacation for safaris and stuff 
Uh, but it was a really rewarding project and there had been numerous incidents where kids had fallen into this valley would be really uh, high water levels and there would be villages on, that would become completely isolated for several weeks. So this really felt like a valuable contribution and was a great way to get to know a lot of the other bridge engineers uh, across Kobe that are eager about what they do. Okay, so um, CAD IMP uh, basics that I've called it. Uh, so pretty much uh, to start off, anything you can do in Sophistic also exists as a Teddy code, more or less. And uh, there is uh, um, an, uh, an example library within the Teddy user interface with a lot of great uh, examples. Uh, they, the Teddy code is organized into program modules. You have the keywords. The keywords have variables that you could input. And by simply pressing F1, you get the help menu. But one thing that I really want to point out is if you go to the help menu and open the help manuals that are there, because in the beginning, I usually just open them whenever I run into an issue. It's really interesting to read about all of the different opportunities that are actually available. And there's also some benchmark manuals that shows you exactly how the that you could compare one of these Teddy modules to a design example to see how Sophistic does it design or mechanical uh, calculation. Another thing that I, we start recently started using is that you have the opportunity to add a template location too. So we have a template location for Kuvi provided examples, and then we have the examples provided by Sophistic. And that way we're able to, to share knowledge across the firm. Um, some other uh, things that I really, really like about Sophistic is this uh, possibility to combine the user interface with the Teddy uh, input. I've seen a lot of stuff from the Sufi Plus Manager uh, and actually within Sufi Plus, you have this import option, uh, which allows you to import geometry generated from Teddy. So you can have part of the geometry generated within AutoCAD and part of it imported directly uh, and to do some simple modification because there's always something that's a little bit different at some point on the bridge. Or you could do it the other way around. You drew a cross section uh, within, within AutoCAD but then you wanted to have some variations and put it inside a loop or something. And then you simply press the export to dot, and then you get the Teddy file. Then you could place it inside some other big workflow. So it's very flexible that way. In addition, you're probably aware of the variables and blocks that allow you to reuse stuff. But another thing that I would really recommend is this tabular function. Really easy to use, perfect for Euro code variables that change like linearly varying between different numbers uh, and then you just use it with like, like a lookup uh, function and also other functions that are possible to put in anywhere we had a great presentation earlier by Niels with the uh, uh, cdb link and that's also quite easy to use within teddy you basically use the app key notation and then you could get pretty much any data whatsoever. You could use it to apply loads, you could use it to update your Teddy code, uh, you could use it to provide the data in a, a, a format that's suitable to you, or export it to text files uh, or, or similar. That way you don't have to open a lot of different programs. And these reports, um, easy to customize if you, for instance, insert images by using the link command or using the text command to create your own custom sections. Yeah. And some other uh, possibilities that are there that are not the most commonly used uh, is that uh, the Teddy uh, version of any project can be run directly from the command prompt which means that you can put your sophistic calculation within a bigger uh, workflow for instance you could create an excel sheet that runs sophistic from excel and pushes results back to excel you could do like i did here and put it inside 
uh, optimization algorithm and generate new Teddy code based on the results until you have an optimized uh, design. But you could also do it the other way around. From within Teddy, you could run any command prompt command with plus sys. Really useful for copying files, simply a plus sys copy. But you could also run executable files. For instance, you created your own program to upload results to some common database or any other complex workflow. So huge opportunities here. There's also a bunch of ways to export results. This is just a simple image of me regenerating the cross section directly from the database within my own graphics so that I can add my own labels with the picture command. You could use uh, uh, the PLB converter to export graphics generated by Sophist directly to PNG files. That way you could put it directly into Word or whatever other presentation format you are using. Uh, finally, if you are, if everyone in your project is working through text-based code, you have this great opportunity that's Git. And if you're not aware what Git is, it's basically a version handling platform for text-based code. And it's great uh, possibility to have multiple people working at the same time on the same project, because uh, each person is ver working on their own copy of the code when their copy is working they upload it to the shared database it's available for everyone and it's an automatically merge conflict check and you can compare versions very easily uh, instead of if you just place all the teddy files within the same network drive and everyone is editing simultaneously you would crash the other people's analysis right mm -hmm. simply if you're halfway through a command and uh, but this allowed us to be three people working on the same bridge at the same time. And these days, the duration of project is always getting shorter. So that's really beneficial. Uh, one final uh, basics uh, slide. There's actually a lot of different ways to modify your structure within Sophistic. Uh, the easiest one is within linear analysis module ASA. You could just use the group option and say, I want these groups to be included in my analysis. Uh, and that way you can easily change the way your structure behaves, add the support, remove the support. Another option is to use the mod keyword within Sufi Mesh A. Then you could change, for instance, the spring stiffness of your structure between two analysis. And that way have both a conservative estimate of the stiffness and a liberal one to just see the variations that it would have on um, your structure. Another way to sort of use different geometries for the same model, but within the same platform is to use the CDB keyword in the DB merge. It allows you to collect data from any other database and put it into this Sophistic database. So for this bridge, for instance, let's say that I want to see how the superstructure, internal forces of the superstructure for different uh, pile dimensions, one where they're fully corroded at the 100 year period and one where they're completely new. I create two separate models within Sophistic and then I use the CDB keyword to just copy the results into the other model and that way I could create Maxima and get envelopes including both the different types of model with completely different cross sections. Then we have the launch keyword used for the launching design. CSM also allows you to activate and deactivate a lot of different portions. And then uh, finally, I mentioned the possibility of just continuously up, uh, changing the geometry because you're running everything from some other environment, like I was showing with Grasshopper or within Python or whatever you prefer. Okay, so the first bridge we're looking into is Hummelvik Drua. This is a bridge located near Trondheim, has a constant curvature of 700 meters, so no one of this weird S-curve stuff. Uh, a length of 228 meters. And then the entire bridge is launched from one side. Uh, as I said in the very beginning, this is a third party check. So we don't have infinite amount of hours to do this. And also uh, still want accurate results, uh, but in an efficient um, way. Uh, and that's where Cadimp uh, becomes really, really handy. 
the model structure is basically these two yellow beam elements that are connected through shell elements and the shell elements have orthotropic stiffness so they only carry loads in the transverse direction uh, while the beam elements carry the loads in the longitudinal direction and if uh, we just look at the shell it looks like this and uh, the definition of the beams they look like this and then the structural model uh, with the moving springs uh, looks like this uh, in the final position and then in the final position I change it to just some simple kinematic constraints and even though you don't see them there are some short beam elements in the bottom here that allow me to easily extract forces and release the degrees of freedom that I want uh, and then with all the internal stiffeners uh, as well uh, in the beginning uh, first thing I had to do was create the cross section uh, since this is a composite bridge, uh, it turned out to activate the different parts of the cross-section. Uh, I need to define it. Uh, I could only define it once per cross-section. Uh, so any, any different cross uh, construction stage where I needed a cross-section part included, I needed a new cross-section. So uh, in addition, I had 13 casting stages and uh, a variation of the affected width but I could do that afterwards but the point was that uh, I just created this uh, one um, cross-section within uh, within Sufi plus very easily just draw with your mouse and then when I was happy with it I exported it to Teddy and then I put a loop around it with some variables that allow me to change the concrete type change the reinforcement uh, sizes and then also which construction stages to activate the different parts in. So really a really simple way to to get the most out of um, uh, your effort. Um, we've seen a really cool and uh, complex launching today but this bridge has a constant curvature and is a lot easier to do the launching and that's actually what I want to show with this slide. Uh, it might seem like a really big job to do the launching for for any type of bridge but within Sophistic the pretty much the three steps I had to follow was uh, activate my moving springs and uh, generate the construction stages and tell it how much the bridge has moved so that's what I'm doing here I set up a loop with specific launching stages you could of course just create a specific step but I wanted it optimized to make sure that I in addition to have the critical load cases, I also wanted a step of 10 meters. And then in the end, uh, I deactivated the springs and sh shifted to my, my final bearings. So yeah, not something to be worried about really. Um, load case challenges, I got a good, I had a different title for this one, but there's, there's a lot of things that you need to be in complete control of when you're working with code and one of the things that I realized that I was often creating one script for displaying variables and another script for applying them uh, but at some point some occasions I put the wrong variable within the view uh, within the report browser so I thought I'd calculated the right one but in reality I uh, calculate the wrong one. Of course, it's written somewhere else in the report as well, but I just wanted this summary. Uh, summary. And what I found out is that it's really easy to uh, avoid this duplicate definition just by putting everything with si inside a definition block and then apply the block both within the module and also within the text block. Because if you go on the very top of your report browser and show include uh, the dot file, it doesn't show you the value of the variables but when I put it inside this text box I could see what load cases I had created and also when you use this double backslash for commenting it becomes available in the text document while the ones that I commented out with dollar signs because they are not relevant they are not visible in the report browser another thing that uh, you should do is uh, create blocks for reoccurring definitions for instance Every single linear analysis had to be calculated for a specific construction stage and with this orthotropic stiffness. So make sure to put that inside a simple block and include it everywhere so that you don't 
forget to update it somewhere if you copy pasted it all over the place. Uh, I would also recommend to use subgroups. That's also quite easy to just set up in SuperMesh R. Uh, in the example over here, I showed that I had all of these different groups for the superstructure, but I just put them into a subgroup that allowed me to easily within the wind graph select the left beam or the right beam if I want to view only those so that I didn't have to all the time check out all of all of these boxes. And finally there's a program that is super underrated I think and that's the decreator within Sophistic. It allows you to integrate forces across shell elements or beam elements to uh, a specific uh, location of your choice. So for instance for this uh, bridge, I have these two beams, right? And for a wind force, you get compression in one and tension in one, and the moment is carried like that, but you can't really see the moment in the moment diagram. But if I use the uh, decreator, I can plot it at this fictional beam in the middle and see what would the total moment diagram be if this was a single beam. And that way, it's way easier to verify that you're <laughs> traffic load placed on one side of the bridge uh, or a wind load coming from the side yeah more or less acts like you you wanted it to uh, load application this is also just an example of how simple teddy code could be and uh, the formwork on this bridge wasn't placed at the same location as the casting because the formwork had a specific length and the casting stages were of varying length uh, but because I chose simple coordinate system to work with, I could simply just set up a loop uh, uh, across uh, this load definition to apply some line loads at the specific uh, stages that I wanted to. So I basically just provided a list of where I wanted the formwork to be to start and end, and then uh, I uh, got my loads. So really powerful compared to going into Sufi Plus and drawing these line loads uh, one by one. Another trick that I discovered uh, during this is that uh, when you run the CSM module, it creates a file called your project name, whatever that is, underscore CSM LF dot dot. And this one contains a lot of very useful definition blocks. Uh, so what, uh, for instance, what it contains is this if loop statement that allows you to really easily within AQB just select a specific construction stage and it includes all of the loads that you defined in CSM up to that point within AQB so that you don't have to copy all of this stuff around and make sure that you're always including the correct loads and the correct variables. I had a lot of uh, launching stages right and I also had a lot of casting stages and I didn't want to uh, do the copy paste thing and make sure to correct errors 30 times each time I found that I want to do something differently. But you can't really put loops around program modules from what I'm aware. So what I did was that I placed my program inside a text file and then uh, I just changed some variables within the text file and within Sophistic when you use this text function you're allowed to just uh, select the file location that you put this text into. So first I create the empty file and then I place my text into this text file over each loop. Uh, and then eventually I just calculate that text file. So the text file looks pretty much like this. It contains all of the different casting stages and you can see also here that I'm referring to, to uh, this block stage design from within my combination block. Uh, and in the end, just plot your result in the result viewer. You could plot a bunch of results at the same time like I did here, just to see that yeah, you're pretty much covering the areas that you want with your different load cases. Uh, yeah, so yeah, great uh, possibilities there as well. So that way I managed to minimize my code a lot. As I said, part of the point here is to show that we are doing an independent check of a very complex bridge. So real big point here was to make it as easy as possible and make sure that we didn't induce our own errors. The final project that I want to talk a little bit about is Mjøsbrua. We're looking into the new regulatory plan uh, between Moalve and Rotary and 
within that one we need to cross Mjösa. So it's a lake near Lillehammer. This is one of the alternatives that is currently under consideration. Has a length of 1,465 meters, 22 spans, and a varying width between 20 and 22.8 meters. The water depth is around 80, 50 meters, and we've modeled the piles just a little bit below the surface uh, for this model with uh, yeah, fixed ends. Um, uh, because uh, this bridge contains some complex uh, cross-section variations, uh, we decided to create this parametric uh, cross-section. Because we have a variation of width, we have a variation of crossfall. Because the crossfall is so big, we found we couldn't really uh, yeah, uh, avoid to consider it. It had a pretty big influence on, on the stiffness of the cross-section. And it also... Uh, was the idea to have pretty complex uh, post-tensioning geometry, which I will come into a little bit later. Um, so this is perfect for the CADIMP uh, syntax. We create this cross-section within uh, the Teddy definition, and uh, one of the things that was happening was that the entire cross-section was turning over to the side, but I didn't want my vertical axis to turn on the side. I still wanted it to be uh, parallel to the vertical global axis. And then um, there's this possibility to just easily say that this coordinate is based on a reference between this point and this point. So I just created this dummy point that allowed me to quite easily just rotate my entire uh, cross section. Uh, great things about this way of dividing the cross section is that it's really easy to reuse. Now that we have this, this is a part of our database, right? We can share it, we can add comments or link to proper documentation. Uh, and uh, we also used it to generate the geometry of uh, our BIM model, which we also had to deliver. Because you can just use this within Grasshopper to, to generate the volume object. Uh, the geometry of this bridge was created in Grasshopper. Uh, and even though working within the same Grasshopper script at the same time doesn't really work, uh, you can just have separate scripts to develop different parts of the structure. And that's what we did here. We had someone developing the superstructure and someone developing the substructure at the same time, because both of them are generating one Teddy file each. And then within Sophistic, you just calculate both of them and then you have included the entire model within Sophistic. Uh, so you have the possibility to do parallel work, parallel updates. And in addition, we also just created the 3D model, as I mentioned, at the same time for both superstructure and substructure based on the very uh, same data source. Uh, the Grasshopper Sophistic plugin, I won't dive too deep into this, but uh, it's basically a toolbox that allows you to convert geometry into Teddy code. So the green box that I've selected here basically says, create Teddy code from surface. And if you're familiar with the Grasshopper, there's a lot of different ways to create that surface. Here I've created some foundation slabs based on some rectangles and a tabular input. Uh, what we found is a really useful way to work is to define the data in Excel. So we still also have a, a custom Excel reader. Uh, what we did was that we had Excel sheets with macros that would uh, export itself to CSV files because CSV files are really quick to read and also there's no risk uh, of the files blocking each other because we sometimes experience that when Rhino was accessing an Excel file and you were also using it and OneDrive or SharePoint was at the same time trying to do something, it, it could cause some, some errors. Uh, so this Excel sheet shows how we have a bunch of different uh, pile configurations stored in different sheets. I could just simply choose one of the sheets. I could preview the data if I want. It creates the geometry. And I would also recommend the plugin Telepathy which allows you to store uh, data within um, sort of variables. Instead of always dragging these wires, you just 
define a name in telepathy and then in a completely different location of your script you just write the code name and then you can access the data from there which yeah could be be quite useful and another thing is that even though you can't run regular python within grasshopper there are some plugins that allow you to start python from grasshopper and this is what i used for the optimization algorithm that i showed earlier that allows you to read results from sophistic through the cdb connection and create your own plots or yeah pretty much do whatever you you feel like if you put in the effort okay so the post tensioning i guess we didn't necessarily have to do uh, this complex uh, analysis but we were a little bit curious if we were able to fit the cables into uh, thin uh, webs without uh, doing more than a little bit of an expansion in the upper left corner at the same time uh, uh, yeah make sure that we could uh, include it in the global model where we had this variation of uh, crossfall i won't dive into all of it but the top image with the green and the red square shows two squares that aren't really rectangular the, the edges aren't parallel but there are mapping functions within grasshopper that allow you to map some geometry from one um, surface to another and um, this was really useful because what i did was that i knew where i wanted the cable to be uh, compared to the cross section and i want, knew how i wanted the vertical geometry to be but it was quite hard to draw the horizontal curvature in sophistic so that the cable would always be on the correct uh, uh, position because my horizontal geometry is pretty much dependent on the vertical geometry so what i did was create my own way of defining these curves i drew the uh, vertical alignment and then i drew a section and then I used my own sort of lookup function to say that if I'm at this elevation, I should have this horizontal displacement. And then I could create my curves within Rhino. And the great thing about having the curves within Rhino is that you could do all sorts of checks. I would check that uh, the radius of the post tensioning wasn't too, too sharp. I could check the distance between the cables in this very complex uh, geometry that I created and then eventually I put it into Sophistic by simply exporting it as a geometrical axis and then within Sophistic I could refer to a geometrical axis and use that as my post tensioning geometry so let's see if the video works uh, that one shows how these cables are moving from the top fla uh, uh, flange to the bottom flange and then because the cables span over two span widths they have to be reorganized so that the ones that will be anchored is anchored pretty much now and then uh, have this continuous system that goes throughout the bridge and this would have been very hard without the great capabilities of, of grasshopper mm. okay we're at the wrap up uh, so i would say that efficiency and complex variations are possible with Cardiamp and Grasshopper. When you become skilled at both of them, it doesn't have to be a tool that you only use for your most prestigious projects. And the Teddy Code workflow allows parallel work. I think that's very, very useful. Uh, great way to cut down time and prevent uh, bottleneck uh, resources who are working way too hard. Uh, number three, as I said, really I recommend looking into the to the manuals. Just read them a little bit, uh, especially the basics manual. Just read through the entire thing without really looking for something. There's a lot of things that I, I wasn't aware that was in there. And then the CDBase option uh, opens a huge amount of opportunities for, for custom workflows. Okay, that was my presentation. Thanks.